and the 49ers get beat 23-17, and a lot of the numbers don't look good. Six sacks given up, two turnovers, a punt blocked. Almost a muff punt, Steiny. And they simply Dowling muff one. They but simply, got it back. Yeah, they simply couldn't get the Vikings offense off the field consistently. And uh, interestingly, though, the 49ers won the time of possession battle, if that means anything. But when you go 99 yards in seven seconds, yeah. you're probably you might not win that bat win, win the time of possession game, and it turned out not to matter. Yeah, I do wonder if just just about Kyle and his approach. You know, you talked about the record that Jordan Mason set against uh, the Jets in regard to the most carries for one back under Kyle Shanahan. Stanley, I wonder why he went away from feeding the beast, that is J.P. Mason, and why he only got 20 carries. I'm not saying that's why they lost, but you hit me earlier this morning when you said, you know, they got down in, inside the uh, 10 and first and goal, and they threw it three times. Like, that's your bell cow. He, he he averaged five yards on the ground. So I don't know if he was trying to spell them or what, but I guess it's fair to second guess why we didn't get more Mason. And the only thing I can think of is, you know, he's a backup running back who carried 28 times on a short week, and maybe Kyle Shanahan didn't want to run him 25, 30 times um, the following week. Uh, here's Kyle Shanahan on their failure convert on third downs. All right. We didn't convert on third down. When you go to, I think we were two of nine on third down, which usually doesn't lead to touchdowns very much unless you're doing it all in first and second. One of three on fourth down doesn't help. I think we finished, I think on that last, we were two of four in the red zone. So it was a challenge today, and we can do better. Yeah, two for ten, actually, from uh, on third down conversions for the San Francisco 40, 49ers. And what about Kyle coming out being, uh, this year, ultra-aggressive, going for fourth down early, Stiney, letting it hang. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to uh, Bob's in San Francisco. What's up, Bob? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? Love the show, guys. Thank hey, you. Thanks, man. I, uh, I uh, uh, got three quick observations. Number one, everybody knows that with the preseason shortened, everybody, you know, it's going to take week three before everybody can start getting sharp again, right? That's just my right. perception. Then I think that the other thing was that uh, we got two young players playing safety, so, you know, they obviously just let the guy get behind him. That was that was a big no-no. Um, I agree with the fact that uh, we didn't use Mason. You guys hit the nail on the head. When yeah. you're up that close and you're not running, you're only running once. I mean, come on. We should learn from our mistakes. You know, that's, that's the thing. But I'm not saying that he's not, you know. I mean, Shanahan is the best we got, right? Obviously, he's a great coach. But the fact is, it's just that sometimes maybe he needs an extra guy around him to kind of to kind of get him aware of what's going on. Maybe I'm not sure. I, I just don't know about that. But anyway, the other observation was that if you look at the, uh, the the Chicago offense last night, right? Okay. Every time they ran, every time they ran, that actually hurt their their uh, offense because they have no running game. Mm. It's the opposite. It's the opposite for us. That is our offense, is our running game. And then so when you get down to the goal line, why are you throwing three times in a row? You know, that just doesn't make any sense. So yeah. anyway, I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it, Bob. Yeah. To me, there's two things Overreaction there. Overreaction Monday, I get it. To me, there's two things there. One is I get, I get establishing the run. Right, but why wouldn't you want to run it when you finally do get down into that area? I, and man. the bottom line is they passed thirty six times and they ran twenty five times, and Jordan Mason ran twenty times for a hundred yards. But I think a lot of it, in terms of people who wanted the Forty ers to run more, I mean, I don't disagree with you, but when you play the whole game from behind. Sometimes that changes your sense of urgency. Yeah, but Stiney, especially when, you, when yeah. it's more than one score. Yeah, but I'll say this: at halftime, they were down six points. It was thirteen to seven. So you talk about you know Brian Flores and his success last season against Kyle Shanahan on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Stiney, was in that game, and uh, Minnesota has success a lot of times. Evan and I saw this in the green room. We had the game on. You know, they were bringing eight, they were showing eight guys, seven guys. Minnesota was like they were going to bring them. And then a lot dropped off in coverage. 
And I wonder before the game if somehow there was some PTSD from last year's Monday night game to where Kyle felt like I'm not going to run or try to establish the run because Isaac Garendo is the only other back outside of Debo with a carry. And, Stani, I think in a crazy way, that that helped Minnesota not having to stop Mason because he was getting it Yeah, when he got it. Uh, JT in San Jose. What's up, JT? How you doing, man? <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. Morning. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a tough watch. I mean, just from my observation, Shanahan, what he does the best, he overthinks things. The game plan should have been simple. Run the ball, establish a run. Let's get these 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 uh, linebackers off the line of scrimmage. When you're putting seven, eight guys in the box, yeah. they already know you're going to run. Then when you see DB out in the flats, where do you think the ball's going to go? You put them in the back, but where do you think the ball's going to go? The thing is, like, when you had CMC back there, you had to pick your poison. Okay, if he's over here, you got Devo out in the flats. You got who's going to take who? I just didn't see that him spraying the ball like he should. The offensive line was horrible, horrible. We spent all this money for these great players, and that poor kid's running for his life. I don't care how much money you pay him. If he's going to be on his back like this all the time, your money is not invested well. Those guys should have never got the money and, and didn't. They definitely underperformed. Well, so to far, see him in, in that yeah. type of pressure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it, it's hard to watch defensively, too. I feel like these guys came in there and go, hey, it's just Minnesota. Hey, Sam Darnold. I see two coaches that were not prepared. Defensively, it, it, that disappoints me. Shanahan, I already know who Shanahan is. We know what he does this to us every game. But hey. with our defensive coordinator, with the type of players you have, you should be effective. And my thing is, those are great players. Those guys are only as good as when you put them in position to win. We already know their athletic ability. So my thing is, Coaching, why are they not prepared? And then you're getting beat by second and third string guys? Yeah. Come on. That's who. Thanks, JT. Yeah. Appreciate the call. And, Stani, I'll say this to that point about uh, sourcing, sourcing, dialing up pressure. What do we know about Sam Darnold? That's his weakness, right? That's why he's he's been a journeyman. And I felt like the Niners just, you know, let him get comfortable. And they let him get comfortable by not – making him make quick decisions or getting rid of the ball. And, again, that 97-yarder, it was – forget it got complete. Steiny, I'm like, who the hell do you think you are? You know who's coming at you? You're playing the Niners and you're throwing from your, your end zone? He had all – he had three and a half seconds, four seconds to step up and throw that thing like – and it's one week. I'm turning into you. What was I saying last Tuesday? Oh, this defense – but it is shocking the way that this game played out. Kyle not feeding the beast and Sorensen not dialing up the pressure when he saw that he, his guys weren't getting home. Yeah, see, that, it, that's where, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I'll bet you there weren't a lot of running backs that carried 20 or more times yesterday. So it's not like Unless he went totally over. away from Mason. And the other thing is, as as – much as Darnold did, I mean, they got to him four times. They 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 sacked him four times, but not on the third down, well, Steiny. Okay, on the money down. Well, they got to get stops. Mm-hmm. They got to get stops. Maybe maybe we overestimated this defense. Well, they are no excuses. But what was my concern? No Greenlaw. I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully, he'll be back. But more so than that, Steiny, no Hufanga. So maybe that ninety-seven yarder doesn't happen. I don't know, but. Bottom line is you got to manufacture when your guys aren't getting home. And Bosa had the two sacks. It starts with him. He's the highest-paid defensive player in the league. So if anybody wants to pick up the phone, call in, text, or say they need to see more, I get that. But nobody on that defensive front was disruptive. And I sure as hell didn't think Minnesota, with their new defensive line, Stani, was going to get six sacks. Like Trent didn't have a good game. Brindle, nobody up there had a good game, I didn't believe. I mean, well, man, they could say F you. We ran for 100 yards on the ground and averaged five yards a pop uh, run block, and the coach didn't dial it up enough. I mean, Warner played well. Debo Samuel played well. Um, I, I think Mason ran very yeah, well. Those three. But other than those three, I don't I don't know who played well. Do you think Kyle coached well? I'm, I'm going to say this wasn't his best game. I mean, it's so easy to say that after you lose. Sure. He didn't. Not, he got out coached. Sorensen, if I want to throw him he in got there. out coached. Nah, yeah. You know, basically, 
anytime a coach loses, you're going to say he got out coach yeah. for the most part. Uh, let's go to Doug in Berkeley. What's up, Doug in Berkeley? How you doing, man? Good morning, guys. Good hey. morning. Hey. Uh, hey, I'm I'm doing pretty well. I got the day off. Nice. There you I'm, go. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing pretty well. I get to listen to you guys. You know, ordinarily that doesn't happen. So. Oh, good. Anyway, I got I got some quick thoughts. Yep. Um, uh, just a few quick thoughts. One. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Minnesota, Minnesota outplayed us for sure. I did. But one thing is, give them credit. Uh, we look bad partly because we we were complacent. I seen, but the other thing is, the other team makes you look bad when they play well. You know, mm-hmm. so I think that, that you know Minnesota gets some credit. I think everybody was off their game. If you think back to last week, we won the game, but really deep down inside, do you think we looked that great last week? I think we look good, but I don't think we look that great. And I think people were complacent, you know, our guys a little bit. And, and, and that, uh, you know, that, 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 that contributed to it. Uh, we were only down 20, what, 20 to 14. Yep. We were never down a lot. Our inherent talent is such that even when we are complacent and don't play well, we shouldn't be down a lot, but we were not playing our best game, but we're just so talented that, that, we're not going to be embarrassed, but we're, we're, we're we know we can play better. Yeah. Fred Warner had it right. There were too many guys saying, "Oh, my bad," you know, "my bad," and they're looking around for somebody else to make a play. I think he was right on when he said that. Um, uh, final final couple thoughts. Thinking back to last season, I'm looking at yesterday. I know Brock had 300 yards. But the offensive line and, you know, Trent and all this kind of stuff is supposed to be great and uh, it wasn't the best game. But it, if you just think in your mind, he's always got three defensive guys around him when he's letting the ball go. It's rare that he has a clean pocket. Mm. Uh, just, you know, don't if you just stand back from the page and just think about uh, the games, doesn't it seem like more often than not, well, it doesn't seem it is more often than not. He's pressured. I think that he's arguably better than we think he is. If we could just give him some time, you think Tom Brady was the best. What's your What's your major takeaway when you think about those games back when Tom Brady somehow Belichick got him an offensive line? He was not mobile. He was rarely pressured. When he got pressured, that's why he lost those two Super Bowls and the Giants got to him. I mean. Uh, Brock I mean, is pressured all the time. No, so. you're right about that. And that that's the one thing about, you know, you mentioned Brady. I mean, Brady was known for getting rid of it before the rush could get there. And clearly, Purdy, um, Kyle Shanahan needs needs him to operate with uh, with a little more time. But uh, oh, go ahead. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. No, I was just going to say, Snotty, I don't, I'm not saying the guy's wrong, but from when I watch Niner games, I don't think Purdy's under any more duress than anybody else. And since the inception of him being the starting quarterback, they have went to an NFC Championship game and a Super Bowl seconds away from winning it. Now, yesterday, he was under duress. Don't get me wrong, but, I mean, you don't win like the Niners do without handling your business up front. And, you know... He's done it with his legs. Every quarterback's under pressure, but yesterday was bigger than that. They got whipped up front on bo- on both sides of the on the ball, and I didn't see that happening. And again, um, you can say what you want, but I don't look at it like that, Stoney, to where he's running for his life. Well, I look at they've only. I don't look at last year anymore as mattering at all. To me, whatever they did last year, whatever they were successful at, whatever they needed to work on is what they had to do. This year's team is completely different. They're one and one, and they haven't done a great job of giving Brock Purdy a lot of time to throw. And Purdy hasn't looked as good as he's looked in the past in the first two weeks. thought he was fine in week one. He was good. Uh, Yesterday, didn't. Didn't play well. Yeah, I don't think he played well. Um, I don't think that he. Uh, I don't necessarily think he was running for his life, but he also wasn't just sitting back there with plenty of time to throw. And I mean, the numbers aren't terrible, but the reality of the situation is he had one touchdown pass, and I mean, 
Who cares if it's a fumble or an interception? Right. It's two inter- it's two turnovers. And it really, to me, wasn't like sometimes if, if a quarterback's in the pocket and there's a heavy rush and he fumbles, sometimes I, I don't blame it on the quarterback. But a play like that? I mean, that's two interceptions, yeah. plain and simple. And if you watch the game, which I know you did, Stoney, there were some, again, I'm not nitpicking here, but I'm just telling you what I saw. Minnesota dropped in coverage, and Brock tried to squeeze it in there and got lucky on some throws. You could say, oh, that happens to every quarterback, Goo, but the bottom line, the decision-making and some of the, the coverages he tried to throw the ball into, he got lucky on a few. From the 707, fourth and one on the two yard line with Mason averaging five a carry yeah. and not giving him the ball. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought the third down where they had. Even the, the commentators were saying, here comes Mason. Well, I was, I'm talking about the one late in the game where it was third down um, and they threw the ball to Debo Samuel for minus oh, eight was, yards. Yeah, that, I don't, yeah, I don't know God, what the hell that was. That's called TC, Stoddy. Too cute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, A-Bomb in Petaluma. What's up, A-Bomb? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for taking my call, yeah. guys. So, Absolutely. Uh, what was up with Wisnowski? That was the worst onside kick I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. I have an eight-year-old son who could have done a better onside kick. <laughs> I mean, they might as well have just handed, handed the ball to, to the guy. It had no no bounce to it. It was like a little little spiral right to him. But the onside um, kick is dead now in the NFL if you look at the success rate. I hear you, but it's kind of, if you need that, you ain't getting it. Yeah. No, that's a good point. But I just thought it was it was pathetic. You're a pro. You you got to be practicing that. Give your, give your guys a little bit more of a chance, you know? Um, and the other the other point was when the block punt happened, like Wisnowski just like blacked out and just stared at him, like, "What am I going to do now?" It's like touch the guy. What yeah. Is, like, what are you doing? Yeah, that was strange. That was strange why they didn't at least tackle the guy after it got blocked. Yeah. This is uh, this is uh, Brock Purdy. We're talking about the fourth and goal early in the game, and uh, some people didn't like that call of not going to Jordan Mason. Here's Brock Purdy talking about that play. We felt like we you know, could have scored on that drive, and I love the aggressiveness by Kyle going for it, fourth and two, fourth and one, and they had zero blitz, and um, you know, one guy just came free, which in our pass protection, that's just how it is, and, and they got a hand on it, a tip ball, man, at the end. So it was a good defensive play on them, and I was just trying to give J.J. a shot. That was, that was where the ball was supposed to go and against man, and I you know, thought I had it, and the ball got tipped. Oh, my gosh, Donnie, I just had a flashback to the Super Bowl when uh, Chris Jones came free and, and deflected the ball. But Purdy right there makes it sound like that's by design. Somebody's going to break free, but if it's the wrong dude breaking free, he can mess up the play. And mm-hmm. that's what Minnesota did. And I don't know if you heard before the game, Brian Fl- or after, real quick here, Brian Flores, the defensive coordinator, said we wanted to play with violence and we wanted to be physical. And I think he hit those two up. They hit that out the park. Let's go to Peter in Walnut Creek. What's up, Peter? How you doing, man? Hey, Peter. What's going on? Monday. Hey. Hey, hey, I was text- I was texting my nephew. He's a big Minnesota fan, okay. born and raised in Minnesota, lives in the Twin Cities. So we're going back and forth on text throughout the whole game. And a couple of my comments were as the game is going on, I Say losing C Mac is huge bummer. We lost a whole dimension. Um, then I said, "Oh, the Vike D came to play," and he says, "I can't believe my eyes. They look better than they have in a long time." Yeah. And then I said, "Your O line and D line are kicking our butt," and he goes, "Yeah, they are." And further on down, I make the comment, "We're being out coached," and. Then it just goes on and on, and then I'm slowly <laughs> complimenting the Vikings more and more and getting more and more on the 49ers' butt. And then we just wound up the text conversation where I said, we got beat and outcoached by the better team. So, you know, it's just I just write it off to one of those days. The Niners weren't there, and the Vikings were stoked. Yep. That's, uh... and, they kicked our, and they kicked our ass in all facets of the game. Yeah, well, you know what? It's it's week two, and I have no problem with that. Looking at it as, as just one of those games, mm-hmm. but now you got to win next week because if you don't win next week, you're one and two. But I, you know what? When I and I've heard this a few times, 
uh, today, and I don't disagree with it, and maybe I have a reason for it. And it doesn't feel like yesterday they played with any urgency. Mm. And that could be a function of the Super Bowl hangover. And this is a team that's gone to four NFC title games in five years. They've gone to two Super Bowls in the last five years. They know how hard this is going to be. They know they have a 17-game season. They're just two games into it. And maybe this is going to be a year where the 49ers are going to have to get their backs up against the wall a little bit to kind of shake it off because it is a it's a it's not an easy road for the 49ers to play an entire season like they've played the last four or five seasons when those years didn't end well it's just a grind and maybe the first month of the season month and a half is just going to be a grind for this team until they get started well it's about i don't want to go biblical on you stoney but it's about revelations like, you got a question mark at quarterback, and we all assume this guy, Brock Purdy, Who? is going to get a lot of people, 50 to $60 million, and he oh. doesn't look like that in two games. And to say, I'm not saying it's going to be tough, but you just said it in the first block. You know, this is a different team. And what's scaring me about this team and his red zone inefficiency is – how long is McCaffrey going to be out? Because I thought Kittle was enough, and I said it. I thought Debo and Ayuk were enough. I thought Trent Williams was enough, and the emergence of of J.P. Mason. So I don't want to sit here and sound like I'm crying in my beer about not having McCaffrey, but the bottom line is yesterday on the road to an inferior opponent, you got it handed to you. I don't so, know if they're inferior. That and I that, don't know if they're inferior. But did you? I love you. I know how we felt going in, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't doesn't matter matter how we feel. And I'm saying we, Stani, when you come out, the bottom line is I can't just erase yesterday. This is the this is the point. Mm. Is the 49ers were not a 12 and five team that came in against a seven and ten team. 